Hello, John. Hello, Adam. So today we're going to talk about this 300 restaurants closed in the last six months. If this continues, we won't have many restaurants left. Um, there's a few reasons um, that have been noted why the restaurants are closing. Um, people are working from home, the minimum wage increase, employers now have to pay for extra sick days, the auto enrollment of the pension, which is coming down the tracks, the increase in PRSI. In the pandemic, um, the VAT was reduced to 9% to help businesses in the hospitality and the tourism sector to cope with costs. Um, you got increasing supplier costs. Um, and it, when we refer there to the 9% tax, um, that's known as tax warehousing, deferring tax in the, in the pandemic. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, we know that pubs are very, very important. Or pubs and restaurants are very important for um, in the community for social relationships, community cohesion social capital and reducing isolation. So they're very much a visible business, a visible entity, and something will have to be done to prevent these closures. Correct. And um, <laughs> there's several factors affecting this. And the number one factor is the amount of people that they let into the country. And most of them, quite a few of them, staying in hotels that heretofore were open for tourists and for people to be able to stay. And so um, that is a major factor, uh, that there's not enough hotels where people can visit and stay. And I'm talking about tourists. Where are they going to stay with all the hotels full of full of um, Ukrainians and others? Uh, so that's a big factor. Uh, the other factor is that uh, uh, because of the pandemic, or the, the fact that people couldn't leave their homes unless they were wearing a mask. And uh, if they were, they could be arrested if they were outside somewhere, uh, apparently, and somewhere. Uh, so um, all this affects the confidence of people uh, going out and dining. And uh, people then found where they were used to going, uh, if it was a hotel, it was closed. Uh, from the point of view of, of people to dine, because they were full of refugees, a lot from Ukraine. If you've got 100,000 people coming to a country like this that have no visible means of support, they're housed in hotels and other places where people heretofore would have visited and perhaps stayed. So these are all factors. And plus the lack of footfall. Um, people were not getting as many tourists as we used to. And we're not getting the sort of tours from the continent that were great visitors to this country and staying in hotels and other places. I haven't seen that many tours compared to years ago. Now, the 9% VAT that, um, that they enjoyed before the pandemic because um, they were, you know, they're uh, employed people, and they have buy food from, uh, from from other suppliers and that, and by them closing, it's a knock on effect to other, other outlets that employ people, and so there be redundancies. So it's not just the restaurants closing, which, an average apparently a fifty is it fifty a week or fifty a month, for what. That they're closing. So they're saying that basically that um, there's three hundred restaurants closed in six months. Okay, so that that's an awful lot. Okay, whatever way you work out the figures, you know. But the thing is, you you mentioned there about um lack of tourism. Okay, um, if you go back to the Fine Gael government under Enda Kenny, okay, um. Yeah. Ireland always had, and if you go back to the 1980s and 1990s, we had, we had a very strong religious tourism. And of course, then we had the Catholic Church scandals. But the problem I've always said about this, this is that the government, we have a Department of Justice to look after anything the church has done wrong. And But Andy Kenny got very heavily involved in the slating of the church. And this was a mistake because from a government point of view, from the exchequer point of view, um, the, the, the church brings in a lot of tourism. It, 
if you look at people going to church on a Sunday, what they used to do was you might have nowadays you might see you'd be lucky to see 50 people in a church. But back in the day, there was 2000 people probably in a church. And afterwards, they would all avail of the local pub and the local restaurant throughout the day on a Sunday, the Sabbath, you know. Um, but the government got into this habit of, of um, coming down heavy on the church um, to facilitate other social justice groups in some part. Right. Um, and that was a big, big, big mistake. Um, on the part of the government. Okay, so they played a part there in killing off our religious tourism, although we still have a good tourism industry. It's not as good as it was, okay? The other factor as well that we have to consider is that, that the restaurants depend somewhat on pubs, okay? So 2,000 pubs have closed since 2005, okay? And the beginning of That's this bad. was, okay, if you go down, if you go back to the, um, to the 1992 Finance Act, OK, um, so we're going to go to Section 242 of the Finance Act in 1992. Um, what happened was the government brought out at that time, up until then, that the pubs could avail of, um, they, could, they could pay their tax on the drip, basically, OK? Um, they didn't need tax clearance, but this was a tax clearance bill, Section 242 of the Finance Act in 1992, and that was the beginning of the downfall for the pubs. That's not very much, mentioned much in the media, OK? So what happened was, um, pubs would owe say 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 to the revenue commissioners and they do a deal with the revenue, Asher will pay in three years five years and you know they were kicking the can down the road and this went on until the early 2000s in some cases okay but the revenue got tough, customs and excise got tough and they started doing um, checks on pubs and they were closing them down one by one there was, and they lost their pubs because of this tax clearance bill in 1992 so what I'm saying is with, with the bill there, they, sh they should have been careful how they handled the bill and how it was implemented over time. And they should be, instead of saying, we'll implement this now over the next five or 10 years, with such radical changes like that, you need to um, to extend the time over a 20 year period, probably, you know. And this is where I'm yeah, going back to. to say the word, so first to say they were so short so it is that they need a good kick where it hurts. And the fact of the matter is that pubs pay twenty-three, I don't know what sort of percentage on on drink that they're selling. They're already paying a fair bit of tax to the exchequer. Uh, but they're so short so it is that they nearly want to crucify people as regards tax and uh leave you without a, a able to uh, afford to buy a suit for yourself. Uh, they want to sort of look at the overall tax situation. Pubs and restaurants pay a queer bit of tax if there's any alcohol sold. Wines cost a fortune here, well, because you go to France in these countries, they cost a fraction of what they cost here. So therefore, there's tax. They're already getting a heap of tax when these, before they started acting the card with the pubs and the restaurants. Mm -hmm. They want to wake up from whatever sort of stupidity they suffer from, because I call it stupidity of the worst order. If you're already getting a fair rate of tax when there's pubs open and doing a trade, uh, well, then they're getting tax uh, value added tax and all the rest of it. Now, they can't crucify people with uh, overloading tax. And this question, if they have a turnover, uh, then... Uh, uh, they they owe this, that, and the other. They're paying staff. So with all these closures, uh, they're not getting the, the VAT that they were used to getting. They might be getting some from the supermarkets because people now are buying their uh, alcohol in supermarkets and drinking at home, which is not a sociable way of doing things. And it's often injured injure families. So there's a whole heap of issues. But a government that sort of has an agenda, like what, what they've had, and you mentioned 1992, and that's going back a bit. And so there's very short sighted. You want to have a government with vision for the overall good of society. And to my way of thinking, they have not, they have neglected the Irish people. And it, and the process, the sort of business, the places where they can go and dine and stay. If you've yeah. got hotels for, a lot of hotels full of, of foreigners and uh, people from other jurisdictions. And so where can people stay? People have to try and find a guest house uh, yeah. because hotels are full of all these others. Okay, okay. But, a few. 
uh, here and there free. Now, suffice to say uh, that uh, the restaurants and the pubs it want to be encouraged to, to stay open. Okay, so the reason I mentioned the Finance Act there is because you have to be very careful when you make radical changes to finance finance acts or if you start increasing or messing with the VAT increase. So in, in, 2000, in the year 2020, okay, the VAT was reduced to 9%, and now it's that's going to expire. So I just want to give you the... Um, the actual figures of the costs. Okay, so the government has actually bailed out the restaurants and the hospitality sector to the tune of one billion almost. Okay, so so up to two thousand and twenty one, it cost four hundred one million. Then they extended it to August two thousand twenty two. It costed two hundred fifty one million. Then they extended it to March two thousand twenty four. It will expire in May the first. It's known as the warehousing tax. Okay, so. I think the government's probably short-sighted in the sense that they, the the restaurants almost became dependencies on the government. You know, uh, I know they meant well and the whole lot, but I just think you have to be very, very, very careful when you mess around with VAT, um, and when people become dependent on that. You know, it seems to me that they have no vision for the overall smooth running of society and the sp- smooth running of businesses. They'd want to wake up. And realize that uh, imposing taxes and this, that, and the other is no way to run a country. And uh, with the result that uh, the business of bailing out that you just mentioned there, it's like a putting, trying to stop the flood with a few rocks. No, and there's a talking. flood on, and it might get worse uh, because um, where's the visitors? I don't see too many, and I'm keep my eye open because I was in that line of business going around and needing to sort of see a successful business. And I often supplied restaurants and pubs. And now if I was doing that, I'd say I might meet myself coming back because most of them are closed. And these were good, sound businesses. Doing great the thing business. is, the thing is, um, you also got like brokerage services like Just Eat and Uber Eat, which are basically like you know, uh, it's there's an app you download and you can order your food from a variety of different restaurants in the locality. Okay, but they take a little cut as well. And like the uh, the pubs, the pubs basically people, a lot of people started going to the off license and started drinking from home. That had a huge knock on effect. Um, one way to deal with that is to increase the the taxes, the excise duties on in the in, in reduce it in the pubs, increase it. I in, avoid increasing taxes in any shape, way, or form. No, uh, but but uh, as regards the pubs, no, no, we we just focus on the pubs and the restaurants. Uh, off licenses, uh, if you start increasing there, then it works its way on across. So, kick any increases down the street. Uh, no. Don't entertain it in a fit. And quite frankly, you want to be very focused on 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 solutions and solutions that work. Now they penalise pubs and they penalise restaurants and they've made it impossible. And then given all this uh, business of time off or sick and this that and the other, look, uh, you've got to you, the, 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 if if they hadn't have done all the harm that they did, they've done so much harm now. I don't know if there's enough. Um, people that have restaurants with the will to carry on. No, well, I think you misunderstood me there when I'm talking about taxes, okay? What I'm saying there is, okay, that <clears throat> to increase the clientele in the pub, okay, you reduce the cost of the, the product, okay? And by doing that, you reduce, the, first of all, you reduce the tax, okay? So then that reduces the price of the product, okay? And then you increase it in the off-license. So, okay, so it becomes a little bit more expensive. So the people will be thinking to themselves, okay, well, it's not really cheap to stay at home anymore. Let's go to the pub. See, what's happened with the restaurants is it's similar to the pub. People got used to Uber Eats, these these apps where you download, you know, you can, you can order your food and stuff. You can stay at home, okay? Now, it's actually quite expensive to use Uber Eats and Just Eat. They all add on a little, little um, tariff onto the food. And mostly, in most cases, the restaurants are paying for it. So I think they need to look at that, that a lot of people are now ordering food, they're eating at home, and they need to look at the, you know, how do you actually get people into the restaurants away from the idea of moving, uh, eating at home? Um, you also got people working at home as well. There's thousands of people working from home now. So the the restaurants are suffering because of that as well. Um Funny enough, with all that carry on, it sounds like to me if there's a major recession coming down the road, uh, with the policies that they pursued, 
and a lack of thought ill policies, uh, pleasing, pleasing people from other jurisdictions, uh, the like of uh, the United Nations and the World Health Organization, God knows what. Uh, there's a limit to what you can do. You've got to look after your own people first. Don't forget we had emigration uh, in the 50s from this country of over a million of our brothers and sisters. We've suffered enough with the lack of vision of these different governments. And uh, they'd want to wake up. We have a new uh, teacher now, a younger man, Mr. Simon Harris. And perhaps he might have some vision because major, major work is needed to salvage uh, uh, the business environment, particularly in the catering business. Uh, it's in what I call a disaster situation with the, with the, with the way it's being attacked by the by the by the uh, the government under the business of of tax and the income tax and or the you know they want to look at the overall tax by the closing the rest the restaurants closing and businesses closing um and all the rest but they're not getting any tax at all and the public are paying vast and all the rest of us and giving a fair bit of return for what they were doing and then having to sort of give staff time off if they're sort of say, well, not too well. And there's nothing wrong with them at all. They're not uh, geriatrics like old. They're young individuals, fit as a fiddle, but they perhaps overdo something and then they, they, they have to be paid. So there's a whole heap of things going on uh, that this government doesn't seem to be capable of dealing with and they have not dealt with it over I think, the past I think... number of years. If they don't do something, okay, and do something, um, I think what they need to do is, look, there's a whole, as you said, there's a whole pile of things going on. SIP2 are not an agreement. They said there's little evidence to support all these arguments. So I think what they need to really do is to set up some kind of um, committee or some kind of group to ex examine exactly what's going on based on everything that's, that's that we've mentioned, you know. Um, it, otherwise, we're going to end up with like the likes of Starbucks and Costa and the reason they're surviving is because everybody has a fiver in their pocket for a coffee, you know, whereas people probably don't have maybe 15 euros for an Irish breakfast, you know. Um, so something needs to be done. Yeah, well, look, um, the, the business of what they've done is, is disastrous, the policies that they pursued. If you have a short-sighted policy and you're not treating your Irish citizens in a correct manner, vis-a-vis -vis the, the contribution they make. You're attacking the Catholic faith, and you're trying to point problems here, there, and yonder. And what they attack the Catholic faith for, there's no proof that it was actually what they claimed it was. There, it's disputed uh, that uh, county council put in septic tanks and all sorts of things where there was, where there was these homes. And you're talking, uh, are you... nuns are not in the habit of doing what they were accused of, full stop. Now, um, so between what they were doing and uh, and 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 the sort of policies they were pursuing, it wasn't in the interest. It didn't seem to have the interest in the sort of uh, quality of life that we had, where people went out for a point in a chat, and smoked our pipe of peace. They can't do any of them things now. Yeah, because pubs are closed. I, I've seen them all over the place. Don't forget, I travelled down the country. I'm not just stuck in the blinking city or somewhere oblivious to what's going on. But I can't understand these TDs and these people in government. First of all, they closed all the family businesses. We're letting in all these uh, multiples. It seems to be... That, uh, huh? It seems, John, that, that the government um, hasn't got a clue how to how a community is structured and, and all the interdependencies of communities, Okay. Well, as, I, as I mentioned, you know, that if you start closing, say, so many thousand pubs, um, 2,000 pubs closed since 2005, that has a no that has a knock-on effect on their actual restaurants as well, you know? When you start where's, destroying where's, your little where's communities. People, where's people going to go for a bit of a chat and meet your party? You can't be stuck in your blinking house drinking. Uh, that kind of cutology, uh, uh, no matter what price it is, it's it's not the same thing as going out and about and having a bit of a chat with 
with with with people that you sort of meet, and then and it's a sociable thing. I notice now sometimes at and in the mass and that people are coming coming in and they seem to be kind of like talking as if like they haven't met one another because there's no way for them to meet, and they're talking which of course they shouldn't be doing and. In 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 a place where the as the sacrament is there, body blood so divinity, it's a place of quiet. Uh, but uh, this is what I notice, and uh, because there's no place for them to go, and pubs sometimes now are charging more than what people are prepared to pay, especially in Dublin and other places. Uh, so prices that want to they want to be a a whole new look at all these things and facilitate the opening of these places that have been closed. And stop talking about what are millions that are going here, there and yonder to help. Uh, it's not doing much good, whatever they're doing. Uh, so uh, be more proactive and uh, encourage them and support them and welcome them. And stop their old nonsense of going after Catholics and making rash statements. These ones that have done it, have lost out as far as we can see. I think it would and, be good, uh, a good idea. I yeah. think it would be a good yeah. idea, uh, the idea for um, people who own restaurants and maybe for the government also to to look back to 1929 to the Great Depression. I mean, there were some great restaurants actually started around that era, even though they were in the Great Depression, you know. There was the Penny Dinners, yeah. I remember, um, I re researched. But they need to look at you know other times when it was tough how people survived you know and maybe make a few changes themselves. I mean the government has been good to the hospitality sector and the restaurant sector sector in in terms of money, but throwing money at it. I mean they've thrown almost a billion euros at no, it. Oh, that's uh, that, that that's that's uh, that's uh, that's a far far. Uh, you treat them with respect and 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 encourage them because they're paying VAT and they're employing. And they're buying products from from other people that are employed people, um, uh, the, the like of Guinness and and the like of uh, the breweries and the like of suppliers. I mean, they're, they're not going to affect with other businesses, so they'd want to sort of uh, be very grateful for what we we've had in this country. Irish people are well known for hospitality. And they are indeed. Punishing them and talking about tax and the old oh, this that and the other, scrub that for goodness' sake, and stop their old nonsense and uh, encourage uh, people to reopen their businesses and treat them with respect and don't be penalising the way they were. If they're making a few quid, well and good, uh, and this stop trying to get wood out of a stone. You see the way it You see what the, what the result of what they were at? Are these pubs and restaurants closing? And so it, it it backfired and they can throw money right, left and centre by way of grants and others. They want to encourage those things and have a and respect the what, what the contribution that the hospitality sect, sector has made. I'm well aware of the hospitality sector because I worked in the pub trade supplying beer and and, and visiting premises and I know how well how well they were run and how how decent they were in their own way. Don't forget, I worked in Dublin and I worked in Cork, Waterford and Kerry. So I'm pretty familiar with 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 the uh, hospitality sector. I'm not speaking from kind of uh, uh, just using it. I've experienced mm. it. You know, the thing is, like, as I said, there's a rise in Starbucks cost to all these foreign chains. Um, there's also a rise. We don't know. Um... I mean, I wouldn't, I, I don't believe, think I was in any of them because... Uh, I think that are best attract young people. I, I don't see too many older people in it unless they're sort of think that they're twenty or something. Um, it's hard for young people uh, sitting around and drinking coffee. I mean, coffee is 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 all very well, but uh, I don't like even paying a fiver for a cup of coffee. Uh, or well, you see. The restaurants as well. I mean, there's there's a lot of comp. I mean, a lot of people would just go to a restaurant for a coffee, but you can get coffee now. Say you can walk into Centra, you can fill your paper cup for a coffee, four euros. You're out the door. It's a self service machine. There's a lot of self service stuff going on. Yeah, well, you, well, you wouldn't pay four euros for a cup of coffee in 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 a supermarket. You you pay about a euro or something, I think, and uh and then you can have a scone or something and sit down to often have a little place where you you can sit and drink your coffee and your your bun or whatever it is, or maybe have a sandwich. 
And I well, see people in, doing that. In, they, they, they're, they're doing a bit of trade right now. Uh, but it's the, you see, they're not the sociable way that the pubs and the restaurants are where you go in and have a chat. And staff, well, I always found staff down the years as friendly as you could wish to meet. Yeah. And where are they all now, God help them? The thing is that... Um, so, abroad. so what we can see is, as I said, the Starbucks, the Costas, but also we mentioned there in a previous video there a couple of weeks ago, the the food trucks. The food trucks are doing well as well because you can buy, you know, you can get yourself a drink and something to eat for about seven euros, eight euros, and they go for their country walks with the two hands full of food <laughs> and the legs moving, you know. So there's a... We there's actually a... did something about dro drones bringing up. And, and believe it or not, Mana Drone, which operates in Dublin 15, have said that their most popular product is coffee. So you're talking about cups of coffee flying through the sky now over Dublin, okay? <laughs> and people, people are prepared to pay for it. So there's a whole load of changes, okay? And it's 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 a com little complex issue, but I think any really good, shrewd business person should be able to come through it. I know there's rising costs, but look, you know, if they change their business model as well, the restaurants have to try and help themselves as well, you know. So um, they have been bailed. Throwing more money at it is not going to solve issues, I don't think. Uh, they've been given almost a billion. Well, well, that's about the st most stupid thing to do. You, you, you encourage them to open and, and don't tax them to the blinking hilt and give them, a matter of fact, it'd be better if it was zero tax. Uh, for, for for that kind of thing. Follow what they're doing in France and all these places. Uh, I think the, restaurants are doing a bomb. I think there's a few things and, they could uh, they, for 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 the because it's a very visible sector. Okay, there are a few areas where that they could um extend. For example, the warehouse tax. They could extend that for a further couple of years. Okay, they could maybe look at the wages, look at the pension issues for for the hospitality sector again because it's a visible and it's it's a very very important area for the community. I think they should get preferential treatment because they're such a visible business and they're important for social cohesion. And, you know, there's a few areas there the government could be could look at to um to help them out. Suffice to say uh, that my uh, my view would be for restaurants uh, to uh, operate the way they do in France and have a quality of time off. In other words, be open from about half 11 to 2. And then from about half five in the evening, perhaps to about half eight or nine, so they can have a family life. That's the way to do it in France. And that's the way I would recommend for about things. To, and people shouldn't be expecting to go into places, get food all day long. How can the, how can they employ staff uh, for, for those type of periods? The way that I think the restaurants should, should run is, is to sort of follow the French way. Use well, your day that's, long experience. That's very, very interesting because it's a, it's a very, very good point because I have seen restaurants, small restaurants ac across the country now doing that. And what they're doing is they're opening, instead of opening in the morning time, they're opening at five or six in the evening. Some of them are only opening for four days a week also, say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know. So they're changing their business model to, because you wouldn't have the footfall to justify um, having the heating on, etc. you know. But one of the ways that I've just said is the best way in other words, you follow what's successful in other jurisdictions. And that's the way to do it. Um, um, have the footfall, uh, sorry, ha have have them open from, say, half 11 uh, to, uh, to about 2. You know, that's the time people want to dine. And that's the proper time uh, if they want to have something to eat at lunch. And that's when I like to eat. And then they can be open then from about... Uh, five or thereabouts to about uh, half eight or thereabouts and last orders are about eight. If you come in later than that, if you go to France and you come in at eight o'clock when they're closed at night, they'll, no thank you because uh, by the time they serve you, it's, it's it, you'd be there nearly at night, you'd be trying to eat like a, like uh, quick uh, because you take your time and uh, that's the way to do it. And people were expected to be out at 10, 11 o'clock at night to take a jump for themselves. That's no way to be out um, dining. Uh, you, the, the times that I've just mentioned is, is a good time uh, that you should be open. And then they could be making up.
of it. And then the business of wages it won't be as steep. And, and the running cost not as steep. So these are all factors, and I think that that's the, the solution for them to be open uh, at those hours. Could be what they're doing successfully in the League of France. Don't be talking at Britain and some other old Algeria places. Look what the sensible people are doing and then do it that way. Pubs are a different kettle of fish, but I think at the same time, they should close. They, they used to close for a couple of hours uh, every every day, but suddenly that was got done away with. And so therefore you have to have staff and electricity and all the rest of it and all the cost of it. So what, what that is, and, and close for a couple of hours. Don't be having people in. People don't want to be in drinking during the day unless they have a problem. Uh, so you're open from, the, from we'd say, the morning and, and then uh, close maybe about half two and then open again at about six in the evening or thereabouts. Are you talking about restaurants you know, or pubs? Ten. No, don't, don't be going with these hours that they sort of have the lease because then you have to pay staff and there's no family life. Think of family life, number one, for these people that's working in these these places. So watch the, in the restaurants, the proper restaurants, that's owned where people like to dine. That's the way for them to operate and successfully and, and be able to have a family life and have some quality of life. You can't and I suppose have a life you work a day. it's timely as well at the end of our video, maybe to give um, Simon Harris a bit of advice. And that is that if he put a few older people in his cabinet, he'd have less problems. They'd, they'd be able to pass on John Malone style wisdom. We well, hope they would. And, uh, I wouldn't mind if he invited me. I could give him plenty of advice and uh, and uh, proper advice that would be successful. Not sort of having committees figuring it out because they never reach a proper disc discipline. And stop all the advice coming from NGOs and all the rest of us. They're clueless. Uh, so, um, quite frankly, just do what's sensible and right. And uh, for goodness sake, uh, change what they were doing because they weren't serving the Irish people. Uh, you can't close all these pubs and the people talking to themselves and nobody to talk to. Well, said John Malone, I get your drift. I think it was very, very wise, wise advice you was given the nation once again. Okay. And uh, you see, this is it. This is where experience comes in. If you, st if you stayed in the one place you ever come from, you wouldn't know anything. But I've travelled here, there and yonder. And so I've seen the way things are done. And I take note of that. And if I'm in that kind of restaurant business, that's the way I'd be doing it. And that's the way they all should be doing it. You can't be open all day, for goodness sake. You're open for, uh, and this business of maybe open for a few days in the week, that's not giving a service to anyone. Open, open maybe... Sunday, I don't know what way Sunday now, that's a day of Sabbath, I, I might have a different view about that, but uh, I suppose to say, by the way, in France, if you haven't got petrol, a lot of the petrol stations are closed on a Sunday, and you could be up the creek without a paddle, if you were looking for petrol, you won't get it, no they're all closed. Oh well, yes, uh, because people have 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 t family life. Not like I think like, um, in regard to Sunday trading, okay, for restaurants, um, and pubs a lot of the um the small rural towns in ireland the pub stays open on a sunday okay um it usually opens at about 11 o'clock in the morning maybe 10 um to half 10 um and then the restaurants are open as well but a lot of businesses close down on a sunday which is nice in small towns you know well i think that that's that's on the way sunday. it was yeah. and uh it's a it's a sensible way to run things the people that call themselves progressive uh, which they're not. They 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 want to make out that the past is a kind of a, a dangerous time. It was quite a jolly time. Quite the reverse of what they say. Uh, they're obviously clueless even about that. Uh, so, uh, uh, but from the point of view of the restaurants, um, they should be treated with respect and the pubs as well, and they should be uh, able to open uh, uh, restaurants uh, that supply food for for people to, uh, from about say half eleven to to maybe a quarter past two or something like that, but not any longer. And then in the evening time from about half five to nine o'clock, last orders at about half seven, if, if they're going to die. No point in coming in just before they're due to close uh, out. You know, 
in other words, uh, respect. Absolutely. So I hope this man, this new, new man, I'm sure he's young enough and he's experienced enough, I hope, as regards what he's seen in Greystones with the places that close that I know of. He might even take oh, advice sure. from the happy pair people with the they have a nice little restaurant there and a food store. They're, 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 I know them. They're friends. I, I know I knew their father. I supplied their father in the supermarket <laughs> there. He okay. called it the shopping basket. No, he didn't forget what he called it, but I supplied him with stuff. John Malone, and, uh, you know the whole country. And I know those fellas, the happy pair. I know I know where they operate from. Yeah. They had a fruit and veg shop there, but had something between the ears. They had indeed. That's John. Great. Thank you very much. Um, that was a very, very good, very good interview. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. I know.